El tiempo de pulpo! So today, we are gonna make some octopus ceviche. What are we doing today, Leroy? We're going fishing. We're going poke pulling. Fishing first, rock fishing, and then poke pulling. All about weight distribution. All right, we made it. Yep, having just FYI, this is all <laughs> pretty unfished, typically. Pressure is super low because you do need special access to get out here. So it should be productive. Peak low tide is what? What time, like 3.30, 3.45? It is 10.55, so we're about four hours away. It's gonna be a negative 1.6 minus tide the game plan is to create a quick little base camp around here put our stuff down and start rod and reel fishing bait and weight maybe some lures and then as the tide pushes out we'll be able to find those pools and start pocket fishing poke polling doing all those things so maybe what you could plan on seeing in this video if you stay tuned definitely suggest you stay tuned is some grass bass possible cabazon even possible link cod. Hopefully we can fool one of those, but should be a good time. And probably monkey face deal. So let's see what this adventure has to offer. Hey, What's up, buddy? Tide's going out, huh? Oh, yep. Yeah. Going out fast. So we're gonna start hitting this area. And it'll push probably till about this point over here. Yeah. I do have my old one. Yeah, so I, I showed it to him and I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, this is what I did. I mean, hopefully they just let me go, but absolutely no way to get a ride? No? With the ATV. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, this sucks. <laughs> Checked the license, had that. Had the ID, had that. Base pass, not so much. I left it in the car, which is right on that ridge over there. Promise we'll get to fishing, guys. <laughs> uh, so far, kind of a rough start. So yeah, these guys pull up on us and uh, they checked all of our credentials. Leroy and Carl had all of their credentials. And uh, your boy didn't. So this is a long and gonna be tough lesson learned. I'd say it's about 50 feet up, maybe a 60 degree angle, soft sand. <laughs> this is going to be great. Here we go. No turning back now. It's one of those times where you take one step forward, Slide back half a step. <sighs> Whew, I made it. Oh, here it is. All for a piece of paper, guys. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. man. Uh, my license is with yeah, my yeah, buddy. Yeah. I gave it to him and your fishing license. Appreciate it. Yeah, it is. at the end of the day, it's my bad. For future reference, definitely have this legit piece of paper. All right, hopefully the bite turns on for us now. All right. Sheriff, sure, if you're buying, you know what? I hate to say it, but we got banana bread. <laughs> and we haven't caught anything. <laughs> so bananas in all forms. So we may or may not have figured it out, but Carl brought banana bread. Maybe bananas in any form aren't uh, good luck. But anyway, yeah, the fishing hasn't been uh, lights out at all. We haven't even caught anything. At this point, we're skunking. All right, we'll play around with swim baits for a little bit. I like this spot, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely gonna, spot. let's poke pole There's this. There's another good spot there, more down here. That place that I'm, I've got the jungle bed. I don't know 
Oh, got a grassy. Oh, first two. Nice. Right, if you want different colored swim baits, I have tons of them. First one. That's a grass bass. Like All right, so no skunk. Time to put some squid on the poke pole. All right, poke pole time. Oh, that's a small one. It's a nice thick hook too. Yeah, these are the pro cars. Monica likes to use. Heel. Yep. Had to spear that guy. Working for these uh, bites. All right, well, let's see if we can get another eel. Go, buddy. Go. There you go. Just for funsies. Something's on it. Got him. Oh, it's a nice eel. It's a better one. Oh yeah, he wanted that. Ate it good. I'm not taking any chances with hooks right now. Hashtag 2020. This pot has, oh. Oh, that's a big eel. <laughs> that thing's fat. Isn't it? But I still have eel in my freezer. I think I'm good. Yeah. I still have two eel in my freezer. I know. So, you know, let's put on some gloves. All right, bud, you're lucky today. So all these shelves pretty much interlock and these fish can basically tunnel from point to point. And if you let your bait really sit there and that scent starts to disperse through all this network of rock, that fish will smell it and come on in. Well. Just the one eel for you, huh? Huh? Just one eel for you? Two eels and an octopus. Oh, uh, you got two eels. Yeah. Where are the other eels? Uh, he's in a bag. Oh, okay. He's in the body bag. I release that crab, I'm not gonna cook one crab. I know, that, you know, after gut hooking that eel, I was like, uh, I don't wanna just g keep a one eel and fillet one eel. What's, what's Monica gonna say? Monica is gonna laugh at me because I brought you out here and I didn't put you on the fish. <laughs> I mean, we caught a few. Carl could did the best. We caught some grassies. We caught a ton of eels, you know? But it just, we caught some small grassies. But, ah! Don't feel bad. Look at this. This is gorgeous. Still a good day to be out. Fresh air, it's amazing. Right there. And we're back. We got off the water and just really quick about that trip. It wasn't everything that we expected, especially since Monica and Leroy always kill it at that spot. One thing that we think was that those rocks have just been pounded, pounded, pounded overnight. And it's really tough for those bigger rock fish to kind of hang around. So they've probably found a little bit deeper water. So once we came and that tide receded, there really wasn't any of those bigger fish. We caught a bunch of grass fish, but they were so small, the grassies. Uh, we also caught a bunch of monkey-faced eel. We actually returned quite a few, and we only kept the ones that we gut hooked. And then also, if we kept the one that was gut hooked, we might as well kept, keep another one, because why break out the fillet station when you only got one fish? We did get ourselves this. And I will admit, I was lazy, so I wasn't recording when I found this baby, but we found ourselves an octopus. I did have extra batteries with me and I was not recording when I found this because my GoPro was just totally dead, but my belongings were way down about a quarter mile over this treacherous terrain. And after making that hike to go pick up my base pass and coming back, I was, I was pretty much done and the fishing wasn't spectacular. While I was out there, I dispatched it right away the way you dispatch them is uh, you put pressure in between the eyes and the strongest way to do that is typically your teeth. So yeah, your boy went in while this thing was alive and really squirming 
bit down <laughs> in between the eyes. And then what you have to do is you have to turn them inside out to pull the pull all of the intestines out. I think when I bit it, the eyes came popping out. So we don't have to clean out the eyes. But there is a beak that we'll have to address right there, right in the middle. See it, that black thing? That's the beak. You could usually pull it out with some pressure or cut it out with a knife. But first things first is we're gonna, we're gonna clean it. And the way that we clean it, we'll just put some salt in there and really scrub around. So a bunch of salt, don't worry, we'll boil that all off. That'll get rid of that excess slime. Make sure you get each individual tentacle. How many tentacles does an octopus have? Octopus have eight tentacles, thus the name Octo. And speaking of tentacles, this one actually had two tentacles that had been eaten, maybe by a lingcod or maybe by a shark, and they already started to regrow. And actually keeping this octopus was kind of a debate because we made the mistake of watching my octopus teacher. It's a hard thing to explain, but sometimes you just get a feeling and you know there's something to this creature that's very unusual. <laughs> this guy, like, tried to pull a camouflage move, but I saw a little change out of the corner of my eye in one of these tide pools, and uh, it was unmistakable. It actually turned a pale color, so that's how I was able to see it. So look at this. Is, these are the tentacles that are missing right here. See that one? That one's missing. So and it's starting to heal back, but it's definitely seen some battle. Uh, and then this one's a little bit short. So a predator was able to grab it, eat it, and uh, now it's starting to regenerate. Rinse off all of that salt. Now while we wait for that pot to start boiling, Veronica is gonna assist and do some of the veggies that are gonna go into the ceviche. They're cherry tomatoes, which are very different from aroma tomatoes. They have a little more skin. And they maintain a nice texture. They don't get like, soggy like aroma tomato. They're easier to cut. You don't have big old gnarly seeds, you just have little itty bitty baby seeds. It's just like enough tomato flavor without being a giant tomato. We don't want to shock all that meat, we want it to gradually get to temp. One, two, three. Pull it up. Again, what we're doing is slowly introducing the temperature. You pull down all the water. One, two, three. Exactly. See those tentacles are curling even more. Let's probably do it one more time. One, two, three. Pull it out. And then let it relax in a nice little sauna. So we'll let that go for about seven minutes. You like your cilantro real fine, huh? Yeah, like my man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our octopus is done. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put it into, a, into an ice bath. That way, the cooking stops and it's easier to handle and cut up in a bit. Let them chill. See this a little bit. Does it hurt, right? Oh yeah. All right, it's going in. I think it's good. Okay. Not all of it. <laughs> Just remind me not to touch my face. I know. Okay, that's enough. I need. It won't be a lot. The amount of vegetable. All right, remember I said that there's a beak. Now that we've cooked it, we should be able to just press and this might be very satisfying for some. So there goes the beak. This is what they use to bite and eat. Cut the head off. Do we eat the head? Yes. We will eat the head. Ooh. 
the skillet parts. Cut that. And basically just cut each tentacle. And we're going to cut these nice and fine. Throw that in. Hmm, <laughs> that's looking good. Looking good, smelling fresh. <laughs> Add a little bit of our ceviche with our juices. Avocado. Okay. A little bit of oop, octopus, a little bit of cucumber, Put a little sliver of avocado. Boom. See what you think. Hmm. That's really good. I mean, it's a little chewy, but not, not bad at all. I was nervous that that was going to be super chewy. So the lemon's good. It's well salted. It's not excessive salty or anything, but it's good. Um, let me see. I'm not getting a lot of the kick from the Serrano. Let's see. Mmm. Yeah. That's good. Spicy? It has a little kick here and there. I think I'm gonna go straight for a tentacle. Tentacle! Right off the bat. If you like, if you like, if you have pho and you like the ones with the tendons, if you guys like that, leave that in the comments below. But like tendons and things like that, that's what this reminds me of. Really? A lot of nice, resistance that you can chew on and it almost flavor. has that flavor mm -hmm. it has a lot of um gelatinous is the wrong word but i uh, hopefully know where i'm going with that it was super fresh all right let me go for mm. a loaded chip loaded chip a couple pieces mm. of the pulpo some avocado Get that on there, see if I can make it fit. Oh, there it is, right there. Mm. Oh! <laughs> Not good. Yeah. Let's get home. I would pay for this in a restaurant. Appetizer? Mm-hmm. Mm. I wonder how many restaurants have this. I don't think it's something that's super common. Yeah. I've only seen it in one other place. And apparently o octopus is really expensive too. Is it? Mm-hmm. Because of the movie? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> or like, put the price up on those things. Let's see. Oh, I suck at making like the little tostada. Throw a little cucumber. One more. See if I can make it work. Mm. So yeah, really this isn't a true ceviche because it actually wasn't cooked in the lime. We actually cooked it first, mm -hmm. uh, but that really allows you to clean it. It also allows it to tenderize a little bit. Uh, but overall, I think it was a success. We haven't done this on the channel yet. Mm -mm. And it was uh, really good to be out there. Um, again, other than the conditions and not really living up to the expectation, that trip was awesome because we got to hang out with one another, hung out with Carl, Leroy, and we still caught a bunch of fish, just a ton of monkey face eels, and uh, we get to enjoy making ceviche together. That was actually cool because mm -hmm. it was a little bit of a partnership. You got to mm -hmm. cook, cut up all the veggies. All the veggies, except for the onion and pepper mm -hmm. and avocado. So I did cilantro, tomato, and cucumber. Another tentacle. Me? 
I'm that one. Do it. That's not bad. It's pretty good. Not as like tough as I thought it was gonna be. Mm -hmm. I was a little ner nervous. I thought it was going to be tough. And I was like, you need to top it up a little bit smaller. But it's a good bite. Nice. Good job. And ceviche is really good because if you leave it overnight, mm -hmm. the uh, lime juice really gets a chance to work into whatever protein you use. So mm -hmm. I'm really curious to see how this does tomorrow. It's probably going to be even better. Yep. It gets into like the vegetables, you just like soak and then release whatever they've got. And the octopus will do what it's gonna do. Onions, all good. Oh, yeah. They all play together. Mm hmm. Really well. On that note, hopefully, you guys all play together nicely. Yeah. Select the ingredients in mm -hmm. this ceviche. We'll catch you on the next one. This is life. Thank you. Those almonds? Mm -hmm. I can't do almonds. Oh yeah. How does this even happen? Catch the slowest creature on the bottom. <laughs> Look at that. Guys, that's a whale bone. Freaking giant. Dude. That's crazy. Looks like a tree. Octopus are amazing creatures. They're so smart. They're, they adapt to all kinds of different surroundings and They know how to protect themselves when it comes to predators. Just not when They're anywhere near hook to cook